more time. One more time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen.
surprised when I'm reading of the Lord's word. Coming from Proverbs 3. My son, forget not my law, but yet thy heart keep my command. For length of the days long, peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy true forsake thee. Bind them about the neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. So shall thou find favor, good understanding, and sight of God. Man, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean, lean not unto thee thine own understanding. In all the ways, all the ways, acknowledge him, he shall direct thy path. I read Proverbs 3, 1 through 6. May the Lord have a blessing to her here and singing of his words. shelter over our heads, food on our table, and clothes that we could put on our backs, Father God. And the blessings continue, Father God, because we still have jobs to go to, which sustains us while we're here, Father God, and it helps us along our way. Thank you, Father God, for your many, many blessings, because if we look back over our lives, from where we our humble beginnings, and where we are now, Father God, it wasn't our doom that brought us here. But it was your grace and your mercy which allowed us to get this far. And so we look to you, Father God, to go past this comma, because it's not a period, it's just a comma, that we continue on, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, who's our Savior, Father God, who come down to these 42 generations, not for no show, no shape, no form, no fashion, but to save an undying world. For Father God, as you sit high and you look low and look at your creations, we're part of that, Father God, because we wouldn't be here had it not been for you. And even though we allowed sin to come to this world, you still reign supreme. Satan may come to and fro and try to destroy, but you reign supreme. 
Hallelujah to your name, Father God, for you are worthy to be praised. There's none other like you. And I just want to say thank you. For you've blessed us in many, many ways. Bless those who are sick, Father God, in their homes and in the hospitals, in the nursing homes, Father God. There's so many ways that we could have gone. Some of us have traveled that way. But we found fit, Father God, or you touched us, and we looked up and said, oh, there is a light. And if I get off of this wrong path and get on the right path, I can see you again. So, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the turnaround, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless those, Father God, that don't know you in the parting of the sea. Those who are in bereavement right now, Father God. Touch the families. Let them know, Father God, that you are still in control. And you make no mistake. So let them remember those good times, Father God. Yes, the heart is broken and it's aching. But you heal all, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. For we look up for where our help comes from. Knowing that our help comes from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless this service, Father God. Bless those who are on their way. In the name of Jesus, I ask it all. Let our voices be heard. Let us learn of your word, Father God, and apply it to our own lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on, won't you clap your hands all over the building? Let's have a little church this morning. Is that all right? Come on, I don't see you clapping your hands this morning. Let's have a little church. I need you to clap your hands like we in Old Down South Church. Put your foot on the floor and put that hand on. Take another round of that. Take another round, fellas. I don't hear them hands clapping. It's a little song I'm sure you know. Song says, God is my everything. Now, if he ain't been nothing to you, don't say nothing about it. But if you know he's been your everything, I wish you'd stand up on your feet for a minute and let's have some good old church. Let's go. God is my everything. God is my everything. He's my joy. Y'all sound good. He's my hope. Guess what, y'all? He's my rock. Oh, yes, sir. A shelter. Say, God is. God is. He's my joy. Y'all sound good. He's my hope. Listen, y'all. He's my rock. Oh, yes, sir. A shelter. Say, God is. God is my everything. One more time. Open your mouth. Scream. God is. He's my joy. I feel all right this morning, y'all. And he's my hope. Deacon Steve, guess what? He's my rock. Oh, yeah. 
she hard to miss today. Matter of fact, if you close your eyes, you'll still see her this morning. 
Come on, show one more time. Show some love for Lady Brooklyn, our first lady. We greet you. To each of you, my friends and family, we're, listen, we are elated. We are elated to have so many friends and family with us this morning. United Vision, won't you help me celebrate all our friends and family? It's Friends and Family Day, and we all, our friends is here, and all our family is here. I know we don't normally do it, y'all. Give me a little, give me a little happy music, Myron. Give me a little happy music. We don't do it every Sunday, but there's so many folks here that we haven't seen in a while. Won't you go find three or four folks? Just tell them you love them, you're glad to see them. Won't you make them feel welcome? Give me a little walking. I don't care what it is. Play something they can move to. Just want to thank you forever and ever. Won't you go find three or four folks? Show some love to somebody you ain't seen. You've done done for me and I they all thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for blessing for blessing come on let's say it again y'all I just want to just want to forever and ever, and ever, for all you've done. What's up, what's up? Blessings and they all, that's my payment. Curse. Come on, voices, I don't hear you. I just wanna, just wanna. That's my barber, y'all. That's my barber. That's my barber, y'all. And my big brother in the building. Done for me. And I. Right. One more time, all over the building, everybody say, I just want to forever and ever and ever. That's it for all.
so that I can teach you so that you can really shout when I do that. Because if you don't really have word in you, you're just shouting off emotion. I thought I had some folk here who could testify that emotions don't last long and they change. When you shout off emotion, you shout because everything is going good. But when you got some word in you, you can shout even when it's bad because you know all things work for the good. I thought I had a few church folk in here who could testify. When you see me jumping, just don't assume everything is good because I might be jumping into my next miracle. And so while I'm in the middle of the fire, I've made up my mind I'm going to praise him in advance. We're the folk that can testify. Don't wait till the battle is over. I said, don't wait till the battle is over. I'm shouting in the fire. Well, Bible study. Bible study is important. Bible study is important. Uh, uh, Bible study is important. My prayer is, my prayer is that we would make Bible study and Sunday school and Christian education a priority in our lives. A priority in our lives. I believe, I believe Toya, uh, shared a Facebook video, I think it was yesterday, the day before yesterday, that said, what if we treated our Bibles like our cell phones? And the girl in the video, you could tell she had just woke up, but she woke up and pulled her Bible out. She was brushing her teeth, but she had the Bible there. She was making her cereal, but she had her Bible there. And while that may be an exaggeration, Maybe exaggeration. The reality is our phones, for a vast majority of us, shout us. us. That means you too. A vast majority of us, our phones get more love than our Bibles do. Facebook get more love than our Bibles do. Somebody say amen. amen. Snapchat get more love than our Bibles do. Somebody say amen. amen. Our email get more love than our Bibles. And somebody say amen. amen. And so listen, I ain't talking about nobody. I'm talking about everybody. From the one talking to the one listening, I'm talking about everybody. I want you to get that, those Bibles out. And again, not that I profess to be the greatest teacher in the whole world, but I try to study in a way that I can make whatever is being taught learnable. I try my best whether it's Bible study, whether it's sermons, to ensure that everyone who has an ear can understand. I don't want to teach above you. I don't want to preach above you. I want to put it in your plate so that you can digest it and learn it and retain it. Amen? So come on out on Wednesdays at uh, 6.30 and Bible, I mean, Sunday school is every Sunday at, uh, nine, at 9.45. Um, uh, flashback to Monday. Flashback to Monday. How many folk were amazed and blessed at the solar eclipse? Legitimately, legitimately, one of the most amazing things I've ever witnessed in my life. And for the believer, for the believer, it just further impressed upon us the power, the sovereignty, the majesty uh, 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 of our God. Because while we were in all of the transition. It didn't catch us off guard because we know he can do that with or without a solar eclipse. But for the world to know it's daytime, then it's nighttime, then it's daytime, in a matter of 20 minutes time, was a, was a, it was amazing. To, to, to know that the birds were so confused that they was chirping at 309 but dead silent at 312 and chirping again at 314. It's amazing. To, to, to see the squirrels running around in circles, they weren't sure if they should go up the tree or go down the street. It's amazing. To see the man-made streetlights. The man-made streetlights, the man-made porch lights to be so confused that the porch light is on at 312 in the afternoon and then at 314 it knows how to go off by itself is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So the question res res resounds in my heart, who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't serve a God like this? 
and we're blessed because we have had seen it. So I'm thankful for that opportunity. Uh, we had our first Mud Hens game yesterday. Shout out to our team from the Mud Hens on yesterday. Thank you so very, very much. Um, uh, we have games coming up on the 25th and the 27th. Uh, if you're able to help us out with those Mud Hens games, please see Deacon Alexander or Sister Deb Munn to get your name signed up for those games. Uh, we can do more together than we can by ourselves. I think we have probably a pool of Deacon Alexander, maybe 16 faithful, faithful, faithful folks, which I'm super thankful for. But won't you help me give break to some of those faithful folks sometimes? Okay? Help me give break to the faithful folks sometimes. I'm not asking you to sign up for 17 games. I'm asking you to sign up for maybe one or two. That way we can give one of those persons a break one of those days so they can enjoy their lives. Amen? So help us out with that. Deacon Alexander is also coming with an announcement. As he's coming with his announcement, let me also say, uh, brother, brother, um, uh, brother Willis, Gentry, is your husband here? He's not here. All right, so we still give him a shout out. Uh, brother Willis uh, called me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, pastor, um, I, I, I got this smart board um, at my job that I need to give to the church. It's an 80-inch smart board. It's touch screen. It comes with all the pens that you need to use for it so that whether it's in junior church or whether it's in Bible study, that's not an expense that our church has to buy, but it's something that we can use for our users at the church. And so if you go downstairs in our classroom, there is a huge 80-inch smart board that probably costs seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen thousand dollars that was gifted to United Vision because of the members of our church. And so I'm thankful for that as it will enhance the education process here at United Vision. Our, our kids will be able to write on the board like they do in the classroom. They'll be able to use those utensils like they do in the classroom. And so we're thankful for that. So even though he's not here, tell him I said thank you that we appreciate it. Amen? Amen. All right, Deacon Alexander. Good morning, church. We are excited and happy that we're heading toward our pastor's anniversary, amen? Our seventh pastoral anniversary, amen? A committed pastor is what it says. Do we have a committed pastor? He pastors the church. He's the minister of music of the church. He puts his all in all into United Vision Baptist Church. And he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. going to bestow upon him for these next two weeks. It's going to be a power packed two weeks. And it starts off on next Friday with Dr. Williams from Eastern Star. Eastern Star coming over here to join in with us. Amen? Amen. We want to have a packed house here for our pastor. Amen. And we want Dr. Williams them to come over and see how we exalt our pastor as he continues to follow God and lead United Vision Baptist Church. So come on out on Sunday, we have Pastor um, Curtis Johnson from New Jerusalem in Sandusky will be our morning, morning speaker. And Pastor Mumford, somebody know Pastor Mumford? Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Mumford from Lima, Ohio will be our afternoon. Their church is coming, right? The church is coming. So we want to make sure we're here to do our part in support of our pastors, show them that we love them and they come in and join in with us. Amen. Thank you to all of you who have accepted um, responsibility during the anniversary. I appreciate that, that I didn't have to um, pull nobody and beg nobody to do it. They were willingly ready to do what they needed to do for our pastor as we go through the next couple weeks. So I thank you for that, um, for what you do. So if I forget in the next two weeks, I already thank you, right? No, I'm just kidding. But the deacons and the trustees are in charge of the pastor anniversary. So the deacons... And our trustee staff are leading it. I think this is our third or fourth year leading it. And when the men and women of the leadership of the church step out front, we want to make sure that we are out front in big numbers. Amen? Yeah. We want the deacons and the trustee to make sure we're here in presence as we celebrate our pastor and lead the way that we're supposed to lead. We're asking for each member for $75. That's each member of this church for $75 for each ministry for $150. We want to recognize the pastor and what he does, and not only by praising him, but also financially. Anniversaries call for money. Don't kid yourself. 
We call for money as, as well as to, to um, raise, the, raise the funds and as well as supporting our pastor, letting him know we love him. So we want to be a blessing for him financially as well as, as um, spiritually and everything else that I can lost for words for right now and I'm trying to say. So please support pastoral anniversary. Please support the pastoral anniversary of the next two weeks from the 19th. Friday night starts it off. Come on out and support our pastor in his anniversary services. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mikhail Alexander. Thank you in advance for all of your love and support, United Vision. We have a card, um, a thank you card from Mother Jessie. Uh, um, she lost her sister um, a few weeks ago, um, and so she wanted to say thank you for your love and your support. Mother Jessie, you know we're still praying with and for you, um, and however we can be of assistance, we'll do just that. Amen? I think that's all I have by way of announcements. Let's get ready to give. 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 Uh, you know, this is a time that we set aside to receive our tithes and offering. I would that you would be a tithing church. Would that you would be a tithing church. Um, so you know what that requires. 10% of your first fruit. We ask that you would do that. Uh, if you're not a tither, uh, please uh, uh, give an offering. Hold one second. The captains are Sister Carol Alexander and Brother Clyde Bernard of the trustee ministry. So you can see them for your pastoral anniversary assessment. And please mark on give a five is for the pastor. Please mark it in the notes. This is for pastoral anniversary. Thank you. Amen. All right. Thank you for that. Um, and also, we have our afternoon service this afternoon, uh, friends and family. And just in case you already have some afternoon plans, but you still want to be a blessing to the pastors, they, we've made some provisions for that. Deacon Williams, since you're moving already, won't you grab that little basket under there? God bless you. Uh, uh, and you, you know what? You look so good. Just go on and hold it there. Just, just. You got your little blue get up on today. You, you want to be in the middle of the aisle today. Got your little shiny shoes on. There's no church like United Vision. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so, so as you go around, if you got an extra dollar or two or three, drop in that basket for pastor's aid. This basket will be for tithes and offering. When you got your best gift, won't you raise it in the air? <laughs> I love this church for real. Let's make a declaration. This is a seed I sow. Now that debt I owe, I'm looking for a harvest, and I expect my seed to grow. Shall seed grow, seed grow, seed grow in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for gift and giver, seed and sower. Father, I pray that you would give back to them now, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Standing all over the building, standing all over the building, standing all over the building. Miss Deb and Brother Keith are in the rear. Please receive your direction from them at this time. God bless you.
Say it's only a test. Tell your neighbor it's only a test. Say it's only a test. It's only a test. It's only a test. And listen, Crowell can testify. Crowell can testify. Just two or three months ago, she had to have surgery for cancer. But Crowell can testify. It's only a test. It's only a test. It's only a test. It's only a test. Everybody that get cancer don't die. It's only a test. It's only a test. It's only a test. Yeah. It's only a test. It's only a test. I said it's only a test. I said it's only a test. 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 Yeah. It's only a test. Is made whatever be tied. God will, God will. Somebody shout, God will. Don't shout it if you don't believe it. Shout, God will, God will, God will. Won't He do it? Won't He do it? Won't He heal you? Won't he deliver? Won't he turn it around? Won't he do it? Won't he, won't he? to scream as loud as you can. It's only a test! It's only a test! This is just a test. This is just a test of the emergency broadcasting system. This is just a test to make sure your faith still works. This is just a test to make sure you still believe me. This is just a test to see how long you can hold on. This is just a test. Please hold, it's just a test. Please hold, it's just a test. Please hold, it's just a test. We be faith. Endure for a night. But joy will. I said joy will. Yeah.
I tell you, can I tell you why I know it's just a test? Can I tell you why I know it's just a test? I know it's just a test because the Bible says, for we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to its purpose. It's just a test, but the test is going to work for your good. It's just a test, but the test is going to work for your good. Hold on a little longer, because the, te the test is going to work for your good. Matter of fact, what the enemy meant for evil.
your hands if you know all things. Clap your hands if you know all things are working together. Come on, clap your hands if you know all things are working together. All things are working together for my good. The good stuff is working. The not so good stuff is working. My sick days are working. My broke days are working for my good. My frustration days are working for my good. The sunshine is working for my good. The rain is working for my good. My ups are working for my good. And my downs are working for my good. Somebody shout all things. Thought you was gonna mess up, 
but it's working. Works for your good. Can I say your testimony? They thought when they left you died, but it's working. They thought you couldn't live without them, but it's working. They now surprise, cause it's working. And you shall. This rod is working. This rod is working. That's what the text said. Look at the screens. This rod will work for you. Work for your And you shall take the rod in your hand with which you shall do the sign. I won't be before you long this morning. I want to encourage all of our friends, all of our family, all of our church members with this simple topic. Use what you got. Use what you got. Father, we thank you. For we know that all things are working for our good. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your presence. Father, we thank you for your anointing, for your power, for all that you are doing in this place. Father, now as this come to the moment of preaching, Father, I pray that you would decrease me so that you may get the increase. God, none of me, but all of you. Let this spiritual food now, God, be nourishment to our spiritual bodies. So in the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Use what you got. God bless you, ushers. Thank you for standing the floor, Sister Madonna, Sister Rhonda, Mother Jill, and Mother Dawn. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Use what you got. My question to you, my brother or my sister, is when will you start to move on what God has told you to do? When will you begin to do the legwork for the vision God has given you? The question then becomes, why is it taking you so long to get up and go on that which God has already told you to do? Why are you hesitating? Why is there pause? Why is there refrain? There are many people who have been given a life challenged by the Lord God himself, yet they hesitate to act on it because they doubt themselves, they fear failure, they don't want to hear the naysayers, they question the Lord as to why such a great big old idea would be given to little old right. 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 Brothers and sisters, you've, you've, you've seen or you've been in these situations. And if I call your situation, don't know, please don't think I'm in your business. Just know the Holy Ghost is talking to me. You want to start a business, but have it. You want to pursue a different degree, but you ain't enrolled in school. You want to move up the ladder in your professional career, but haven't taken the necessary steps. You want to have a better marriage, but have not taken the necessary steps. You have a burning desire to accomplish some goal or some aspiration that the Lord has already given you clearance for, yet and still, you're sitting in the same spot. Right. Brothers and sisters, I want you to consider the story of Tommy the toad frog. Tommy sat on the log on the on, on a log in a pond every day watching the flies fly around him. Right. Tommy loved uh, the idea of catching a fly because he believed it would be uh, tantalizing to his stomach. <laughs> Yet, as the flies flew around, Tommy had no way seemingly of getting the flies. Tommy had to settle, somebody shout settle, 
settle for whatever he could because although he loved the flies, they never came seemingly within his reach. They buzzed over his head. They buzzed in front of him. They buzzed around him. He didn't have anything to swap them with. So daily he watched in anger as uh, the flies flew by wishing someone would invent some kind of contraption that would help him capture the flies. One day, one day, an older and bigger toad from the other side of the pond came and sat on the same log with Tommy. They both watched the flies flying around them, and Tommy started to complain about not having a way to reach them. He was too big. He was too slow. They were too small. They were too fast. While he complained and gave excuses, he suddenly heard a swooshing sound and saw that the frog next to him had opened his mouth, stuck out his tongue, and caught all three flies in one while. And the older frog hopped away, he turned around and said to Tommy, you got a tongue in your mouth, and you need to use it for more than just complaining. <laughs> Can I tell you that Tommy had what he needed to get flies the whole time, he just chose to use it the wrong way. Yeah. And can I tell you here with your good churchy self, that while you've been praying and asking God and upset with God for him not doing what you want him to do, God told me to tell you he's already given you what you need for your next season, for your next place. But you've got to use what you got before asking him for something else. There are many who will fail to follow the vision that God has given them because they doubt that they have the ability or the opportunity or the resources to make that vision come to pass. God rarely, God rarely gives us a fully baked cake. God very rarely does he give you a fully baked cake completely decorated. And he may not give you the fully baked cake, but he will give you necessary ingredients. You got to mix them together, Gene. Come here. You got to mix them together to make them cookies and snickerdoodles and stuff that you be making that you ain't brought me in a long time. I'm waiting on my cookies, Gene, but it takes some ingredients. Yeah. When is the next choir bake sale? I'm asking for a friend. Uh, 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 just in case. Somebody shout, grow up, Pastor. I'm trying. Let me grow. Dreams don't come <laughs> ready for action. There's usually some assembly that is necessary. Just as God, just as many items come with the necessary screws and tools, you got to put it together. Yeah. 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 I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad that my older brother is here today. Uh, Corey uh, is here. Uh, and, and Corey has something that I don't have, uh, he and my father have the ability to make stuff and build stuff and they don't have to read the instructions. They can just look at it and it works perfectly for them. Uh, uh, I don't have the Cory anointing. I need to read every instruction. I need to read, take letter A and put it in letter B and I still struggle. But can I tell you, brothers and sisters, your life, your dreams, your aspirations don't have to be put together with your own eyes. He's left an instruction manual for you and I to put our lives together with. And can I tell you, part of the reason you and the problem you in now is because you're trying to build without reading the instruction manual. Brothers and sisters, can I tell you, that uh, when you put things together, Daddy, without reading the instruction manual, they might look good for a season. They might look good for a season. But can I tell you, when you're putting things together without reading the instructions, you can drop a feather on it and it'll fall apart because it's not put together the way I wish I had some help here. The way that the manufacturer wanted it to be put together. Let me circle back since you're acting slow this morning. You trying to put your life together as if you are the manufacturer of your life. And can I tell you, your life is not your own. You did 
didn't make you. You've got a master. You've got a manufacturer who's put you together. And in order to be properly constructed, you've got to read.
what you can't do. But if you begin to look at your areas of strength, that you begin to look at what you know you can do, you can take on any task. Can I tell you, I was by no means prepared to be anybody's pastor. I was by seven years ago, I was by no means prepared to be anybody's pastor. And when the time came, I said, I'll do it for this season because I know ain't no way PJ can pastor a church. But I had to break the curse of the who me complex. Because I had to begin to look at, yeah, PJ can't pastor, but there are some things that PJ can do well that can be used as a pastor. He, he, PJ, one thing about Peter, he organized. He's going to put everything where it needs to be. He knows structure. He knows how to follow. He knows how to administrate. And when I begin to look at all the things that I know how to do, I said, maybe pastoring won't be as. Here I stand some seven years later because I didn't give in to the who me. Be careful. Brothers and sisters of the who me complex, yes. but more importantly, use what you got. Yeah. I'm gonna say who me. There's some who me folks in here, but then there's some folks uh, uh, who says I got no support. So uh, because I got no support, I can't do what you call. Uh, Moses complained that he had no standing, no title, no position, no official license to go before Pharaoh, and he said, "Who will I say sin?"
said, I don't have, I don't have what it takes. Uh, Moses went through a list of the reasons why he should be excused from the task. But mainly, he said that he was inadequate because he did not have what it takes. And then here it is, God said, but I will teach you. God teaches those whom he selects for the task that he's assigned. Uh -huh. Brothers and sisters, when God calls you to it, he equips you for it. Yes, Say that again for the people in the back of my mic went out. When God calls you to you, it, he, he equips you for it. I'm going to say it again for somebody in the back row of the balcony. When God calls you to it, he equips you for it. I'm going to say it again because Marquita need to hear. When God calls you to it, he equips you for it. And there is nothing that he calls you to that he does not equip you for.
dry. And it was the same rod <laughs> that turned into a serpent mm -hmm. and devoured the other serpents. Yes. It was in his hand. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was the same rod caressor uh, that he used to turn the Nile River into a sea of blood. It was, it was, in, his, it was in his hand. Uh, Antonio, it was the same rod that, that Moses had in his hand that he, yeah, that he stretched forth in front of the Red Sea. And it, okay, calm down. And, and it caused the sea to stand up. You've got to learn, brothers and sisters, how to use what you got. Uh, Y'all might not know him, but Wally Amos lived a life of poverty. Born in 1936, struggled his entire life. He and his auntie used to bake cookies for fun as a bonding experience. He became so good at baking cookies. He became and began to use what he had. And now we have famous Amos cookies. You gotta use So I know you was in the same spot. So let me let me go with what people said. I was gonna go LeBron, but since you chose Steph, Steph Curry was nothing more than a little yellow boy with a basketball. But Steph took what he had and now owns the NBA record for three points. Because he used what he had. But because I love y'all so much, let me go the other way. LeBron James. <laughs> was just another boy from Akron with a single mama who used 
what he had and is still using it to make major ripples on and off the court because he used what he had. I'm out of here when I tell you that you have to learn how to use what you got. Because when you use what you got, God can do more with it. You got to learn that there is no limit to what you can do when you give what you got to God Almighty. Can I tell you, eyes have not seen, nor has ear heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what great things God has prepared for him. I'm out of here, y'all, but I'm reminded of the old drunk man who searched the garbage can for a little sip of old wine rolls. He found what he believed was an old fiddle. He threw the fiddle behind him and said, there's nothing that can work with this old fiddle. So he tossed it aside. Another drunk man came to the same garbage can and found the same old fiddle. He tried to play the fiddle, but all he got was screeches and scratches and threw the fiddle back in the can, declaring it had no value. But the story says there was a third drunk man who found that same fiddle and took it to an old antique store. And then a great violinist came and walked into the antique store. The violinist began to tune the strings and tighten up the strings. He grabbed the bow and began to softly play a sweet sound on the old fiddle. And he bought the fiddle and walked out of the store playing the fiddle. The three drunk men sat outside the store and said, that fiddle was no good for me. The second one said, the fiddle didn't sound good to me. The third man said, I thought I would just get a couple dollars from the old fiddle. But what the three drunk men didn't know is it's not the fiddle that makes the difference. What makes the difference is when you put the fiddle in the master's hand. I'm gone, y'all, but I came by here on my way toward heaven to tell you, my brother, and encourage you, my sister, to use what you got and put what you got in the master's hands because in the master's hands he can take little and make it much in the master's hand he can make your last last you is there anybody in the room that can testify good things happen when you put it in his hands grab your neighbor grab him by the hand and say excuse me neighbor I see you sitting there today but if you don't mind come on go with me say where we going we're going higher cause it matters whose hands it's in you've got to use what God gave you for his glory and you can't worry about somebody else's gift but you got to use what you got to God's glory everybody can't sing like angels but you got to use what you can do everybody can't preach like John but you got to use what you got everybody can't stand on the door and usher but you've got to use what you got 
So my question is, what you got today? What do you have that God can use? What do you have that God can use? But if you're like me, you declare if you can use anything, you can use me. If you want me to pray, use me. If you want me to preach, use me. If you want me to give, use me. If you want me to serve, use me. If you want me to sweep the floor, use me. If you want me to serve the poor, use me. If you want me to give, use me. If I want to use anything, I got to give it to God because God can use you, my brother and my sister. God can use you, but you got to use what he gave you for his glory. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say, use what you got to give God glory. With my hands, I'm going to give him glory. I said, with my hands, I'm going to give him glory. Y'all slow. With my hands, I'm going to give him glory. With my hands, I'm going to give him glory. With my feet, I'm going to give him glory. With my voice, I'm going to give him glory. Y'all still slow. With my voice, I'm going to give him glory. With my life, I'm going to give him praise. With what I got, I'm going to give it to him. Say yes. what you got. It was really only a rod in Moses' hand. But when you use what you got and God puts his hand on it, it can do amazing wonders. And it's no credit of yours. It's no credit of mine. It's no credit of anybody's except for God because it's because of his hand it's because of his hand that I am what I am so there may be someone in this room today there may be someone in this room today who can say, Lord, here I am. And I want to be used by you. Here's all I got, Lord. You can use me. Is there one today? Come on, you got a vision all over the building. Say, there's nothing better. There's nothing better. Won't you come today? Won't you come? Then no. Come on, sis, there it is. Clap your hands. He'll pick you up. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. You ought to know him. You ought to. Come on. Come on. There it is. Say, get to know him. Get to know him. Right now, today. Is there another? Is there another one today? Come on, say, there's nothing better. You can come today than knowing Jesus. Here's my testimony. It gets, it gets sweeter. Won't you come, my brother? Won't you come, my sister? Yeah. Say, you ought to know him. Won't you come? Say, get to know him. Today, come on, clap your hands. 
Come on, clap your hands. God bless you. Come on. Say, come on. Come on, come on. Today is a good day. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Right now. Right come on, come on. Clap your hands. Just come. Is there another one all over the building? Say, come on. Come on, come on. It's a good day. Come on, it's a good day. Say right now. right now. Let's do it one more time. All over the building. Won't you come today, my brother, my sister? Come on. 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 Right now. Say right. Now. back here I got the Holy Ghost because there's somebody back here who's heard his voice and is going back and forth if it's you I got 
the Holy Ghost. And I'm standing back here because there's still somebody. Oh, they still coming. God bless you. There's still somebody back here who needs to come. And just, just so that you know that I know that the Lord is talking to you. It's over here. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry. And so I know you're thinking, should I go today? Should I wait? Is he talking to me? Is he not talking to me? If it's you, if it's you, oh, there's another one. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. One, two, three. One, two, three. Somebody on one of them three rows. Somebody on one of them three rows. The Lord is speaking to. Don't worry about who's next to you, who might go and who might not go, what they might say and what they might not say. Don't worry about who's going to say it or who ain't going to say it, because here it is. They're going to talk regardless, one way or the other. So I would rather folk talk about me and I be right with God than for them to talk about me and I still not have him. One, two, three. Three. If you raise your hand, I'll walk with you. I'll come get you. I'll come get you. And the child shall lead them. satisfied with the members I got. I'm not doing this for membership's sake because I don't care what they say about me, no way. Truth of the matter is, I ain't supposed to have what I have now. So it don't got nothing to do with, oh, he trying to be the big man on campus. I don't care. But what I care about is your soul's salvation. What I care about is your covering. What I care about is that when you leave here, you don't get in a car accident and die and go to a burning hell. What I care about is that when you leave here, you don't get robbed and go to hell. What I care about is you've got some place that's covering you, some place that's sustaining you, some place that's watching over you, somebody that's looking out for you. Some Williams. Um, you 
go ahead and put some water in the baptism pool. Because we're going to baptize. But we're not baptizing just one person. We're not baptizing two people. We're not baptizing three people. We're not baptizing four people. We're not baptizing five people. We're not baptizing six people. We're not baptizing seven people. But we gotta baptize eight folks. There's eight folks who have decided to make Jesus their choice and have decided to go in the water to be baptized in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. Sister Fields, where's Sister Fields? United Vision, won't you help me welcome and celebrate Sister Sparquasia Fields as a candidate for baptism? Taisha, United Vision, help me welcome Sister Taisha Rogers as a candidate for baptism. Sister Deasia, where's Deasia? De Asia, right here. Come on, you the vision. Help me celebrate Sister DeAsia as a candidate for baptism. Caden. Kay, are you just Kay? Come on, United Vision. Stand up for me, Caden. Wave at the people. Tell them out. Wave at the people. Celebrate Caden as a candidate for baptism. Andrea Love. Where's Andrea? Come on, turn them around. Show the people. Wave at the people. Come on, y'all help me celebrate Sister Andrea Love as a candidate for baptism. Uh, where's Charles? Where's Charles? My dude, what up, Charles? Wave at the people. Hey, Charles. Wave at the people. There you go. Y'all show some love for Brother Charles Love. <laughs> Cherish. That's, this is Cherish. Hey, come on. Y'all show some love for Sister Cherish. Listen, we're going to teach her. We're going to show her the way. And when she's of age, we're going to baptize her as well. Amen. Where is Cece? Where's Cece? Hey Amen. Come on, this is this is Sister Cece. This is Carla's daughter. Come on, show love for Sister Cece. We're gonna baptize Sister Cece. Y'all know this girl. Come on, show some love for Sister Rakasia. Rakasia. Rakasia's coming back with us, sis. Y'all know, y'all remember Rakasia? Rakasia used to say, I pray we'll all be ready. Sister Rakesha's coming back uh, under a Christian experience. Sister Yvette Blanchard, come on, stand up, Miss Yvette. There you go. This is the Yvette. Listen. Talk about talking about hanging out with us for a long time. I mean, literally like five years. I'm like, enough already. Just join. But we are so glad to have you. We're so glad that you chose to be with us. We're super thankful. God bless you. So, so, show some love for Sister Blanchard. Uh, uh, this fella, this fella, listen, when, when, whenever anybody, thanks you, Tina, whenever anybody joins the church, it's a great day. It's a great day. But when your family believes in you enough to call you pastor, it means something special. And so I need y'all to help me celebrate my uncle, Michael Williams, as a member of the United Vision Church. This is, this is the baby brother of Deacon Steve, Mother Davis, Sister Sheila, Mother Rhonda, uh, uh, and look at my other auntie back there, Joanne. Y'all show some love for Uncle Mike. Give him a bless God. This is what the Lord has done. What the Lord has done. I'm done. I'm done. But before I complete myself, let me check one more time. One, two, three. One, two, three. Going once. 
Going twice. Going three times. Listen. Bless God. Let me leave these folks alone, okay? Y'all got to excuse me. My Holy Ghost is on 10 right now. My Holy Ghost is on 10. And I don't want to call him out, but I don't want to call him out. But while Tina's getting their information to all of our family and friends, we love y'all so much. Thank y'all for worshiping with us today. We're grateful that you chose United Vision as your place of worship. Now listen, you're free to come back whenever you want to. You don't got to wait till family and friends day. You can come any Sunday. We're here every Sunday giving God the very best praise, the very best worship we got. I'm sorry, Deacon Munn. The very best praise that you got. So you can come back and visit us whenever you want to. And maybe somebody on row one, two, or three would... <laughs> This is worth the wait. Uh, United Vision, uh, help me uh, celebrate uh, Sister Brandy Combs coming to our family. Come on, celebrate Sister Brandy. God bless you. Uh, and then uh, help me celebrate Brother Jacoby Combs and Antonio Jones Come back to our family. Fellas, get a people. God bless you. Listen, family, we have added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 people to our family today. Come on, let's celebrate what the Lord has done. God bless you. All y'all stand up for me. Everybody stand up for me. Did I get you? Did I get you? No, what's your name, baby? I'm sorry, was you on the list? Did I miss it, Tina? I'm sorry. That was my fault. Y'all help me celebrate Desiree Robinson as a part of our family. God bless you. Listen, y'all all can stand up. Y'all can all stand up. Go over there with Sister Tina. She's going to give you all the next information that you need. Come on, one more time. Show some love to all of our new family. full of new family members. The whole wall. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I love y'all. Let's stand. Let's stand. We get ready to go home. Let's get ready to go home. Don't forget. Don't forget that um, anniversary starts on Friday. And I would love, 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 love to see as many of y'all here on Friday as possible uh, to celebrate what the Lord has done because I couldn't be a pastor without good people. Hello, microphone. I couldn't be a pastor without good people, amen. And so while it is the pastor's anniversary, we understand that we cannot pastor without people. So this is a celebration of pastor and people. So meet me here Friday at 7 o'clock for the start of our anniversary, amen. amen. Listen, I love y'all a whole bunch. Don't forget this afternoon, thank you, Deacon Williams, at 4 o'clock is our family talent showcase. I would love to see you come back and support uh, the pastor's aid. Let's have a good time together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, let's go to, uh, I need you to survive quickly. Or slowly. It's okay. <laughs> right here. Say, I love you. You love me.
I love you. Tell somebody, say, I won't harm you with the words. I love you. Father, we thank you for every gift that you have given to us. Father, I pray now that we are able to give those gifts back to you and that we use what you have given to us for your glory. Now, God, we thank you for every person who is in this place. God, I pray that you would minister to their hearts, that you would minister to their souls. God, that you would meet their needs and exceed their expectations. Bless their going out and bless their coming in. Father, I pray that you would usher them into the best seasons of their life. God, I will rebuke the hand of the devil and curse the adversary now in the name of Jesus. I cover these, your people, with your blood as we leave this place, but never your presence. Go with us as our guide. Go with us as our guard. Keep us and cover us until we meet again. Somebody shout amen. 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 And amen. God bless you. And God keep you. I love you in Jesus' name.